Good morning from Chalice, Idaho. We stayed in a hotel last night so that I could edit and check out this lampshade. Oh my God. Woo, it's Friday. Man, it is beautiful out here, huh? New York is that way, keep going. I have to say that taking this northern route to avoid the heat of America is paying off. All my friends back home are talking about triple digits. I think it's like 70 degrees right now. It's nice and cool. Willow Creek Summit, 7160. Good job, Allie, high five. Bam. Well, we've reached another summit, 7,100 feet, and I can say that while we didn't choose the flattest route across this country, it's definitely making up for it with incredible scenery, mountainscapes, diversity of landscapes. I would say worth it. I think I've said this before many times already in the state of Idaho, but Thank you. It is so beautiful here. I love your state. Anybody from Idaho out there watching this, thank you. Your state has been incredible. The beauty every single day has been just mind blowing. The people are friendly. We haven't gotten honked at by one driver and uh, it's just been great. Looking for Real the biker showed up. Yeah, we're looking for a biker rally. All right, you're here. Man. <laughs> What's that? Welcome. How man. You, doing? you guys want to camp? It's free camping. We have food vendors set up. Really? There's a crazy ass Harley rodeo in dirt. Nice. Tomorrow. Really? What's this yeah. all about? It's a. It's, uh, we're a we're a nonprofit group, the Idaho Motorcycle Rodeo Association. Yeah. We're a nonprofit. We raise money this way for the veterans group, 4-H clubs, and food banks. So what happens at a motorcycle rodeo? You know what we do. <laughs> Listen, the shirts say, just say it the best. Cowboys use horses, bikers use horsepower. I've never been to one. You'll remember it the rest of your life. Really? It's the coolest thing ever. All We've right. been doing this for over 20 years. Yeah. Cool. All this right. is the coolest thing in the world. I am so glad we found it. This was on our list of things to do. Find a small town fair, some sort of quirky celebration. And I think we found it. A motorcycle rodeo. We were riding through this town. Mackey saw the signs, followed the motorcycles, and here we are. And everybody's super friendly, and we're gonna have a good old time, Allie. <laughs> uh, mm. Happy motorcycle rally weekend. <laughs> Ooh, I'm so excited. I am I'm really so excited. excited for this. You know, no, we've I met saw all those signs, and I'm like, shoot, we haven't really done a full day today, but that looks awesome. Yeah. And you know, we've met a lot of really good Harley guys on this ride so far, and now we're gonna camp with them and, and meet a whole lot more. This is our friend Roy. Just met him. What's up, Roy? How's it going, man? Good. That that new love that you feel like you get, when, you know, like when you're a freshman or a junior in high school, you know, you, that's something you should try to hold on to forever. And uh, I think you guys are doing pre something pretty awesome that most people don't do uh, early on and have the opportunity to do early on in in a relationship. So we live in a very very um, instant gratification world. And a long, true, lasting love, I think, has absolutely nothing to do with that instant gratification that we all have, you know, at least the last 30 or 40 years. I mean, I'm 44 years old, and I can relate to it to some degree, but the it's just not a part of a long-term relationship. And so to understand that this is a, this is a long adventure, if, if that's truly what you're looking for, this is a long adventure, you know? You guys are young, so you're talking 50 years. And so just because an argument happens today doesn't mean, doesn't mean much if you guys can go to bed happy, or even if you don't go to bed happy. Understand that, you know, people argue. People have disagreements, people have fights. And uh, that, that certainly doesn't have to be the end of it, but when, uh, when you, 
when you want to make it last a long time, it has to be at the forefront of your mind. Do you have yeah. a partner? Yeah, I'm married. How long? Yeah. 12 years. You know, you think you got it all figured out and that your life is going to be X, Y, Z because you you have done A, B, C and you deserve it. And that's, that's not how love works. You know, you said in the beginning uh, to try to keep that, that love, that fresh love, right? That right. like love you have at four months. Do you have any advice right. for how to do that? Um, so just have fun. Understand you're two different people and value each other's uniqueness. You know what I mean? Like, it's so easy to be selfish in everything we do. And I really, you know, I honestly, truly believe that. We are selfish by nature and it takes a uh, active, you know, effort on our behalf to understand not to be selfish. We just really, really try that. If you guys are staying tomorrow, which I hope you are, yeah. you're gonna kinda be able to see some of the, that raw, untamed spirit of, of America. And so these are guys out here uh, that will get on their motorcycles out in a dirt arena and um, run, you know, run events that, uh, you know, they're not necessarily modeled after a true rodeo in the sense of horses and whatnot, but um, kind of the same thing. It, it harkens back to the days of, of uh, the old bikers, if you will, and them going out to a field somewhere and, uh, you know, that outlaw mentality of not necessarily wanting, uh, you know, to be gangsters or nothing, but kind of wanting to buck the system a little bit. This is just a redneck way of keeping your beer cold when you ride a motorcycle out and about, you know? <laughs> nice. I love it. So we just dig a little hole and get a liner, a uh, trash can liner, and put the liner down in there, drop some ice in, put your beer in, and try to cover it up and keep the sun off it. And hopefully it holds. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. You gotta trust each other. If, you, if there's any doubt, it'll never work. How do you find that when it's you know it. Yeah. You know, you go out with your girlfriends, the guy ain't jealous. He goes out with his guy friends, you ain't jealous because you trust each other. It's when that mistrust comes in there, what's he out there doing, and you start getting doubt. And that's you when things start falling apart. That right there is the best rendition you can get of the uh, better half at home. But it's been modified with the blonde hair but the rack is about right. What kind of love advice do you think she'd give us? <laughs> uh, she'd probably get real serious and tell you to drink heavily and hump a lot. <laughs> because it's kind of got to be a team effort. Right. Because you can't hump a lot unless the other side thinks that's part of the good therapy for happiness, right? Well, and if one person's really drunk, and the other person's not, and you're both humping. No, Ooh, no, it doesn't work no, out. No, it's like, all right, fuck it. Start drinking. That's we're like gonna, we're some fucking. Right there. So <laughs> it's start drinking right now, or we ain't fucking. Okay, there you go. So now, what do you got? You got, you got togetherness. Yeah. You got an event you can do together. Drink heavily and hump a lot. <laughs> Thirty-three years. Married, yeah. Getting drunk and humping. This, I mean, clearly it worked. Works is working. Drink heavily and hump a lot. Get it right now. I think this is great advice. <laughs> I pretty much work for damn near anything. <laughs> Truthfully, uh, I don't know it all. Uh, it's a learning curve, and nobody can tell you. Your parents cannot teach you it. You, it, you have to go through this turmoil, I guess. Then, if you learn from it, good. If you not, if you don't, then I guess not. But if you truly love each other, respect, and you should be all right. There's always going to be somebody who's prettier, somebody who's uh, wealthier, somebody who has, you think, the grass might be greener on the other side, but it's not. It really isn't. You know, it, it, it is all about the two of you. What you guys are doing right now on the road is perfect because you don't have anybody else to fall back on. It's just the two of you. You fall back on each other. Okay, that right there is a great start to a relationship. Make sure that you tell the other person how important they are to you in your life because life is short. You may not have that time to borrow. Biker lifestyle is, as you said, it's not gang related. It never has been. There's clubs and it's a brotherhood. And it's one of the thing mottos I go by is you get what you give. And if you give respect, you get it. If you want to be an asshole, you're going to be treated like an asshole. But bikers are one of the truest people that will ever you can meet off the street or 
pull in on a bike ride and they will take you in, feed you, make sure you're happy, give you whatever you need, and not think twice about it. With the Shoshone Bannock tribes, we are well known for our beadwork, for the tan deer hides, elk hides. And usually when you do beadwork, it's all original. There's no copies. Usually before um, the brothers would go on their runs and stuff, we would uh, cedar, our, cedar our bikes to make sure um, you know we, we go in a good way and that we come back home. The smoke blesses everybody and a smudge is, you, mm -hmm. you kind of bathe in the smoke and it just... Your head, your hands, your feet. Mm -hmm. We stay humble, you know, we're open, we welcome, like we welcome you guys, you know, we help you guys have a better understanding on what our, our native ways are. It's tough to combine native ways and the motorcycle world. It's, as you guys are kind of getting a feel of, it's pretty stretched apart. There's two different worlds there. So that was our goal, to make sure that we could still combine the both of them and be copacetic with motorcycle world and still Indian ways. And that's what makes us unique. When we met, we were both previously married. We met on a bike run. Um, and I'll be honest with you, if you look at them eyes, you're done. Done, over, you're, it, that's it. <laughs> then she turned around and walked away and I got to watch her ass, so that, <laughs> What? It, I'm Turn being around, honest. Paul. It's Turn a documentary. Yeah. See? <laughs> Look at that. How can you not? Um, we both went through our struggles. We got out of our previous marriages. And uh, through that friendship, it has turned into the best thing that has ever happened in my life. Oh, <laughs> I just want your ice cream. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna get a lot of sleep tonight, but that's okay. The sound of motorcycles and music, I think are gonna be drowning out the whole evening, but that is okay. Hey, hello, how are you? Everybody is so friendly here. We've done a couple laps around this little area. We keep on talking to people, they keep on telling us their story. And man, I on this trip, I've really come to appreciate the biker culture a lot more. Yeah, it's been really interesting talking to folks about um, how they look at cyclists. You know, they see cyclists as part of the same brotherhood, part of the same community. And the same as they look out for each other, they look out for us. And I've definitely noticed this, you know, always they're always waving to us, saying hi, and they've been like so just open and genuine and vulnerable with us. They said if I make engine noises, I can be in the parade. Run, 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 It's uh, really an honor to be a honorary member of the motorcycle parade. <laughs> event is the slow race where the winner goes the slowest. Seems kind of contradictory to a motorcycle rider and that's what makes it hard. This one, but it looks pretty sexual. They're like greasing up a hot dog with mustard and they drive by and try to bite it. I think I want 
want to take this event back home and start doing this on bicycles. I think we could pull this off on bikes. Maybe we use veggie dogs in Boulder though, you know? called The Hangover. This event is goofy and crazy and they take it really seriously and it's fun to be part of this. These people are super cool. Yeah, the various events are very creative and ridiculous. The crowd is hilarious and they do all sorts of like songs and chants and stuff. Yeah. My favorite part is how we've been embraced by this community so quickly. We rolled in yesterday and they're like, you have two wheels, you're in. You're part of the gang. There's definitely a sense of camaraderie and brotherhood. Mm-hmm. And the backdrop, the mountains, this location. I don't think we could have picked a better motorcycle rodeo to drop in on. Today was our first motorcycle rodeo. What a uh -huh. special experience to share it together. You don't need an alarm in a place like this when they start their bikes up at 7 in the morning. <laughs> I don't really want to leave. This place feels like home. We've been embraced by this family, this community, and they have been incredibly wonderful. Here's the slogan of the day. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so much fun. <laughs> yeah, you guys are born again. Sorry but, gave me this good luck to it. Because see, today. I want to see these Here's wings going here. down the road. It really feels like they've just like opened us, opened their hearts up to us and welcomed us in like family. Um, it's been super special to learn about where they come from, their various histories and backgrounds. You have a lot of vets here. We um, talked with the, the Native Club. We talked with um, people from, you know, immigrants, Portugal, Mexico, all over the place and coming together with uh, common heart, but very different, different histories, and it's been really, really an honor to get to peek into their, their lives and their stories, and have them share so openly with us. Mm -hmm.